How are we doing everybody and welcome into another episode of ADP Battles here on the SFS channel where every week I break down two players going at similar spots on the draft board and I'll be letting you know which one I think is the better choice and why so that we can have the best drafts possible for the 2021 fantasy season and make all the right decisions on the most important day of our league year from a holistic perspective just because if you get that draft horribly wrong that decreases your chances significantly of winning those leagues. But nonetheless, today I'll be talking about two of my absolute favorite players going at this draft spot, Keenan Allen and Allen Robinson, both who I think are going to be excellent wide receiver one options for fantasy lineups this year, going in the middle of the third round, which is great value for their potential production. So I'm really excited to talk about these players today. Here's your daily reminder to, if you haven't done so already, head down into the description of this video and join that SFS Discord. You'll be able to ask me questions at any time of the day. I'm on there throughout each and every single day, so I'll be answering questions, giving you updates about content and whatnot, and we'll be doing some giveaways on there weekly as well. Right now, we're giving away five draft guides to members of that Discord chat only, so if you want to be entered into that, make sure to join that up. It's completely free. You can literally text me at any time of day in there or anyone in that chat and get a conversation going about anything fancy football. So that's something awesome you need to take advantage of. Also, make sure if you're new around here again, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you join the community and be involved with all the things we have going on this off season, heading into that big 2021 fancy year. So without further ado, let's hit that intro and jump right in to Allen Robinson versus Keenan Allen. Before we get started today, I just want to go on the record again to say these are two of my absolute favorite players at the wide receiver position for 2021 fantasy football. To be honest, I don't really think you can go wrong with either of them, but I think there is a slim margin that makes me like one of these players better than the other. This is much closer, I would say, than last week's episode between Kelvin Ridley and A.J. Brown, where I had a clear-cut and concise favorite player. Again, there's certainly a, a reasoning for why I like one of these guys more than the other, but last week's episode, I think that the evidence was much clearer in favor of one or the other. So I'll link that episode down in the description of this video, and you can go check that out if you'd like to. I think that you'll be able to find it very informational and useful. Today, we're going to try and keep things a little bit more streamlined. I'm going to still go, be going in-depth, excuse me, but I'm going to try and speed this up just a little bit so we're not getting quite to that half-hour mark. But Allen Robinson... One of the most slept on wide receivers over the entirety of his career. He's played seven NFL seasons now, and this dude has, in my opinion, never had top 25 quarterback play, but yet season after season, he manages to produce for us, be one of the best wide receiver ones in fantasy football. I mean, the guy had 1,400 yards with Blake Bortles as his quarterback in his second NFL year, I believe. So literally a, a monster, and he does not get the credit he deserves but this season, I think he's finally going to have the best combination of quarterback play he has ever had in his NFL career. Just some things to highlight for him. He's had three 1,000-yard seasons since entering the NFL. And again, that quarterback play has been miserable. In terms of 2020 fantasy football, he had Trubisky and Nick Foles leading the way for him. That's pretty bottom of the barrel, and that's very below average QB play, if you ask me. He still managed to have 102 receptions on 151 targets. 1,250 yards, and a very average sixth receiving touchdowns, which if we want to project him for an uptick in that category, you're looking at a player that could have a really, really great season as a guy who finished as a wide receiver one last year, again, with a very average stat line in that category. And touchdowns are something year over year where I actually think you're more likely to see regression in that category if you're towards the upper echelon of your peers in that group. But Robinson being, again, very marginally average as compared to the rest of the fantasy wide receivers. I think it's actually more likely than not that he's going to see an increase in production in that st statistical category as opposed to a regression because less than six touchdowns would be very, very underwhelming. But <clears throat> if we take a look at his 2021 situation, his resume, why I think that he's going to be an absolute baller this season. You talk about a Justin Fields and an Andy Dalton stepping into the quarterback situation here for the Bears. And again, Andy Dalton is no star quarterback. He's no exceptional arm talent at the QB spot. But I truly believe that this actually might be the best starting quarterback he's ever had in his career. 
and it's only going to get better from there. So Andy Dalton has produced a top 10, top five wide receiver in his career, that being AJ Green with the Cincinnati Bengals. And that gives me a lot of reason to be hopeful and optimistic when assessing Allen Robinson for this year. Maybe A-Rob isn't quite as dominant as AJ Green was in the peak of his career, but I think that for a player who is also very savvy, very refined in his routes, and does just about everything very well, Robinson's one of the most polished and complete players in the NFL. I think that there's a lot of reason to think his ceiling might not only increase because we typically think of A-Rob as a dominant floor play, but not so much a guy who goes out there and wins your league and wins your weeks for you by himself. So we then transition into a period where it's pretty much inevitable at some point this season. I expect to see Justin Fields on the field for the Bears. That is when things are going to be completely unleashed for A-Rob and the ceiling potential is going to be extremely prominent for the rest of the season as soon as he gets his legs underneath them and things start getting rolling for this Bears team. So when we talk about the most important factors of Allen Robinson's fancy production value, his volume, he's got that there. He's had 350 plus target seasons in his career. That's an absurd marker to be at. We don't see players getting that type of volume. And when you talk about the lackluster quarterback play and still getting that much passing volume, that's something that's very encouraging to see the floor, again, check that off. It's there because we've seen it throughout his career. That's essentially what his entire fantasy value and his his fantasy assessment has been throughout his career is that you can't go wrong with Allen Robinson because the floor is one of the best that we have in fantasy. And I think that that not only gets heightened this season, but again, is something that we can emphasize as all the reason to take Robinson but the thing I really like about this year is, again, that ceiling, I think, is going to be uncorked, and we're going to be able to finally see just how high A-Rob can climb when he has that increased quarterback value and increased quarterback uh, potential for production behind him and obviously assisting him to get to these numbers that we hope he can get to. So Robinson, again, one of my favorite players. The draft value is also there. I don't think it's a reach whatsoever to take him where his ADP is at currently right now. I think he's a steal at that draft spot as he was a season ago. So there's the case for Allen Robinson. Now let's move into Keenan Allen, and then we'll kind of stack the two up against each other and start comparing why I think one is a better choice than the other for 2021 fantasy football. So throughout his last four seasons, or excuse me, his last three seasons, Keenan Allen's actually been a player that I think has gotten the injury tag and has been talked about as a player who is injury prone and not often available in fantasy lineups. And this is something I actually believed until I went and looked at his game log and actually saw he's started more games than Allen Robinson has over the past three seasons. It's very, very close, but Keenan Allen has actually started 46 games in the last three years compared to Allen Robinson's 45, which I think is something worth noting because... I typically think of Allen Robinson as a line it up every single week, a, a dependable starting lineup player who's not frequently injured. And I think that Keenan Allen, it seems like his hamstrings are frequently something that bothers him and whatnot. But again, he started more games over the last three seasons than Allen Robinson has. So that's actually something that was very encouraging for me to see. And another thing that these players have been in the NFL just about the same amount of time as one another. Keenan Allen is one more year experience than Robinson is. But he does have an extra fourth 1,000-yard season on top of A-Rob's three. So that's something, again, that I think is very encouraging to see because both of these players have a very large body of work to show their fancy excellence and the consistent ability to produce year in and year out. Both of these players have had an ACL injury, so they both missed nearly an entire season's worth of production. So again, something that we can take into consideration. But see that they've both tremendously come back from those injuries and produced even better numbers than they did prior to that. So that's not something I'm concerned about whatsoever with either of these guys. The one thing I do want to note though, three of the last four seasons, Keenan Allen has been a 1,000 yard receiver. And the one year he actually missed that marker was in 2020 where he fell just short. He, he cracked 900 yards, but he still finished as wide receiver 14 despite not reaching that 1,000 yard marker. I attribute this missing mainly to the fact that he had a rookie quarterback, an inexperienced offense, and there was a lot of moving pieces with the Chargers this season. Nonetheless, I still think he was one of the better weekly plays in fantasy lineups. He was a great floor play, saw the volume that we want to see from a fantasy wide receiver one, and he was a really dependable target for Fields, or excuse me, for Herbert, and I think we can expect much of the same for him and even project him to increase his fantasy output in the 2021 season. So, his 2021 situation, why do I love Keenan Allen this year? 
The simple fact is that Justin Herbert is one of the best young and up and coming quarterbacks in the National Football League. There is no situation or, or, or scenario out there where I think that Justin Herbert doesn't become a top 10 quarterback in the, in, the, in the National Football League by the end of this season. The talent, the raw ability, and the skills we saw him put on display, his ability to get outside the pocket, make throws down the field last year were honestly just amazing. And he was making bottom of the roster wide receivers look like NFL stars and and proven deep threat players last year, like Tyron Johnson, Jalen Guyton, who aren't scrubs, but they are certainly not elite wide receiver talents. I think he's actually going to come in and Josh Palmer's a, a sleeper rookie pick. I think I'll talk about later here. Uh, obviously that's a time for another video, but I expect Palmer to be very productive in this offense because he has a player like Justin Herbert throwing him the football. Nonetheless, Keenan Allen is, is the unquestioned wide receiver one on this football team. And I just kind of painted the picture there where, again, they aren't scrubs, but they're certainly not as talented as Keenan is. And they are certainly not going to command the target volume and the work share that Allen has in this offense. Another couple things I like about Keenan Allen, he gets a really nice division schedule. You talk about playing the Las Vegas Raiders twice a year, who are one of the bottom three pass coverage units in the league year round, basically, because John Gruden can't seem to draft that spot very well. And then he gets two shootouts per year against the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. And these are some things I think these division rivals go a little bit undernoticed and undervalued. When you've got yourself a really tough opposing division players, like uh, you talk about the NFC West, and you've got to play San Fran, the Rams, sometimes the Seahawks have a pretty dang good defense, the Cardinals have a really good pass rush, like those are things that can actually knock your fantasy value when you've got to play those teams twice a year, but there's some other divisions like the NFC North I talk about, the NFC East, have really, really easy opposing defensive matchups that you can exploit and for fantasy value, that at least gives you a little bit of an edge opposed to other players that might have similar situations. So something quick I thought I'd touch on there. But what I absolutely love about Keenan Allen, as opposed, I think he he outdoes Allen Robinson in this phase a little bit. They both have elite target share, elite volume in their offenses. But Keenan Allen has four straight seasons of 136 plus targets, and he's actually cracked over 150 all but that 136 year. And I think he's actually in the high 140s in one of those as well. But nonetheless, even more of an increased target share than an Allen Robinson. Robinson's right up there with Allen as being super elite at this marker. But in 2018, the first season he had with the Bears, he didn't crack quite 100 targets with them that year. So Allen has a lot of things going for him in this offense this year. And, and just one final nail in the coffin, why I think, and I'll come out and say it here, I think Keenan Allen is the better choice for fantasy lineups on draft day. And again, this is such a close decision for me because they do almost everything very, they do the same things well, but I think Allen does the same things, just a slim margin better in the fact that he has Justin Herbert for 16 games this season, opposed to where Allen Robinson might only have Justin Fields for eight or 10, gives him again, just a tick higher of a ceiling for me, because I think that that is actually going to be something that's very valuable for these two players throughout the entirety and the holistic perspective of the fantasy season because quarterback play obviously has a huge impact on wide receivers and their ability to produce. So I think once Justin Fields comes into the lineup, these two players are just about dead even in their ability to produce elite fantasy numbers. But until then, when it's Justin Herbert versus Andy Dalton, give me Keenan Allen all day because I think that the potential for downfield targets, the potential for accurate passes in the red zone, and increasing Allen's ability to score those very valuable touchdowns is just bolstered a tiny bit above an Allen Robinson. A couple more things I just want to touch on here is that both of these guys are in my SFS positional rankings as top 12 fantasy wide receiver options. I've got Keenan Allen as my wide receiver eight, or nine, excuse me. No, excuse me. I do have him as my wide receiver eight, and I have Allen Robinson as my fantasy wide receiver 10 for this up and coming season. At the moment, that's all subject to change. I update, I update those rankings every couple of weeks. So once I do that draft guide giveaway, you'll probably see some adjustments in ratings somewhere on the board. Um, but I do expect those two players to stay relatively similar in their ADP and my rankings for the time being because their situations aren't something I expect to change between now and the start of the NFL season. But one final statistic is that the Chargers actually toss the ball more than the Chicago Bears do. It's very close, and both of these teams were actually higher than I expected to be in the passing volume per game ratings, but the Chargers are actually fifth in the amount of passes they throw per game at 39.2. The Bears fall in at ninth with 37.8. 
Both of these teams, I expect to actually regress in this category a touch this season because they were both not division leading teams. The Bears barely made the playoffs as a 500 team. I expect them to be better than that this year. I think that they'll be front running a couple more games than they were last year uh, as opposed to trailing and trying to catch up late. And additionally, the Chargers, I expect to be an improved football team, a better roster this year. They really did strides to upgrade that offensive line and help out Justin Herbert as a whole and this offensive football team. So I think that they're going to be, you know, same situation as the Bears, not looking to catch up late in games quite as much and be looking to close out games rather with the run game and such like that. So Keenan Allen versus Allen Robinson, very, very close. The decision was very tough for me. I had to dive pretty deep in the numbers to actually figure out which one of these players I liked more. And I'll have both of their draft guide profiles coming out in the near future here. Before that Monday giveaway next week, I will be having those completed for you all to take a look at as soon as you potentially win access to that draft guide. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Let me know in the comments section who do you think is the better prospect for 2021 fantasy football? Are you team Keenan Allen like me or are you team Allen Robinson? I don't know. We should talk to Eric about this. Maybe he's team A-Rob, but he's a little bit biased because he is a Chicago Bears fan. But nonetheless, Keenan Allen by all the slimmest margin in the world. And something interesting to note, if you want to go check out that draft guide, I've actually got a player sandwiched in between the two. Obviously, Allen as my wide receiver eight and A-Rob as my wide receiver 10. Who is that wide receiver nine in there? So either keep your eyes posted for another video where I might be breaking down my wide receiver one rankings for the 2021 season or go check out that draft guide and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.